Hi, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I'm going to talk to you about fluid painting, paint pouring, the terms you might run into, some best practices, and how you can do this at home. This is a really easy way to create art. It's a lot of fun. You still do need to use design and form and function, but honestly, it's very playful and I highly recommend it if it's something you've been interested in doing. This is the piece I'm going to show you how to create today. I used cadmium red. I used carbon black and titanium white. I did it in the fluid because that's better for paint pouring, though you can take your heavy body paint and very slowly thin it with your pouring medium to make it more liquid before adding it to your pouring cup. This is GAC 800. This product is a pouring medium. This is like any of the pouring mediums, except it is designed not to craze. And that would be the difference between just a polymer medium and something like pouring medium or GAC 800 is that the pouring mediums are made to not craze. Crazing is like where the piece like cracks open and dries unevenly and maybe gives you a surface that you don't intend. Let's look at how I created this fun paste and how you can create this at home. So I've got out my plastic cups for mixing and my Starbucks swizzle stars for stirring. I finally found a use for all those little swizzle stirs that I've got. Upcycle. I'm putting out my GAC. The mixture that is recommended by the manufacturer is nine parts GAC to one part paint. This mixture really, really gives you the lowest chance of crazing. So I'm kind of eyeballing that in if you were very, um, you know, specific person, you could be very like regimented about that, but of course I'm not, I'm completely artful. I'm doing this on a special piece of this board that um, prevents acrylic paint from sticking to it so that anything that I get that off spills can actually become an acrylic skin later because I can peel it. As per an article in Just Paint, I'm adding a little rubbing alcohol to each of my paints. This creates this sort of interesting drying effect where the paints dry um, kind of unusually and the alcohol dries at a different rate than the paint and might increase some of your interesting structures in the painting that can happen. So I've got all this, I'm, I'm uh, stirring, I'm mixing it up, I'm just trying to make sure it's really incorporated. You might actually want to put these in a sealed container and allow them to rest overnight even because that will prevent air bubbles in your piece. Again, check the description below because that will help you uh, find more information. Um, I've got some informational links. So I've got my black, I'm stirring it back up, trying not to create air bubbles, wearing gloves because I know this is gonna be messy. And I'm doing the pure pour method. When you're out there, you're gonna see dirty pour and pure pour. Pure pour means that I'm using just acrylic paint and products for acrylic painting. I'm not adding anything non-typical and each of the colors is contained in its own thing. They're not intermixed. They're going to intermix on the canvas. Seems to be the two processes that we're looking at. When you see those terms, that's what people are meaning. The additives and then also are the paints put out pure. So I start with circles of my black and now I'm adding my red in circles, kind of going around. I let it touch in some places. I let it not touch. And you can kind of see it's self-leveling. It's pulling out. And I'm going to start just doing the tip. I don't know if you guys remembered that game Labyrinth um, from years and years ago that was a marble and you had to like tip the little tray and keep the marble from falling in all these little holes. This reminded me a lot of playing Mar Labyrinth and that's pretty much what um, pores are. I'm doing this on a canvas board, not a canvas. And the reason is, is that the canvas board is easiest to level. When I want to dry this and let it rest, I'm gonna want it to be able to dry flat and level or all the paint will just fall off onto my really cool mat and I'll make skin, but still it's gonna fall off. I'm gonna use a card, card stock here to just very carefully pull the paint to the edge of my canvas. I could do this by continuing to tilt or I can do this pull for what I'm doing, the pull is fine. So I'm using canvas board because a stretch canvas has a drum, right? So this canvas stretched over the drum. And the weight of the pour can cause it to sag in the center and cause all of your paint to kind of be overly thick in the center. Since that's not something that I want, I find the boards not only economical, but in this particular case, preferable. I've got this set up, um, you know, just beautifully. It's, it's like right there. You can see it's on, again, on this mat. If I didn't have this mat, I would have this raised up on cups. 
um, above my table surface. I'm now taking my white, which is heavier, denser than my red and my black and pouring it over the top. Now I can just free form flow it like you see here, allowing it to pour out where I'm gonna intend for it to dry. You've got a very structured, organic piece. I'm uh, adding some of the red that was still in my cup, dropping it in the middle of the white. You can see that creates kind of a really dramatic effect, right? So you can pour over a pour over a pour. I'm going to start shifting the paint here. This is going to allow the white to sink a little bit and shift around the canvas, which is nice. I like pouring white on top, again, because it's denser and you can see it's starting to push in to the paint and sink down and pigments are coming up and that's starting to create effects. The different densities and properties of the pigment. These are fun things to observe. I recommend keeping a notebook just so that when you get a result, you can duplicate it. I'm gonna take my card and again, touch it up. I cut up a bunch of these before pour. I'm on the silicone mat that I know I'm gonna be able to pour the paint off of. If I wasn't on a silicone mat, it would be raised up on cups. Now, I could be done here, but I'm not gonna be because I'm gonna do the swipe method. I'm going to swipe across the surface of my paint lightly and because of the different densities and because of the rubbing alcohol, I'm gonna get some very crazy, interesting effects in the paint. Now, I don't wanna swipe the whole canvas, right? I don't wanna just swipe, swipe, swipe everything. I wanna swipe some things so that there's areas of rigid structure and then there's areas of organic flow. And it's that push and play of those two things that I think will create some interesting variance in the piece. Now you're gonna hear a lot of stuff about cells and that's the little structures of the painting that look exactly like cells. And a lot of people are trying to get that with oil products, different oil products. But, and please check your manufacturers for this because they will back this up, that actually voids the warranty in your paint and creates delamination later in the painting. Not immediately, not right away, down the road. Some of your painting can delaminate because it's not able to cure. You just don't wanna put oil products in your acrylic, just in general. That's my opinion. There are other opinions out there. I would say get the cells by understanding the density of the pigments and how you pour over doing the silicone because if you want it to last, that's gonna be important. The other thing I really wanna say, since this is the first one and this might be your first introduction, is please don't use torches. Please do not superheat your plastics, especially your paint plastics. Even if this wasn't cadmium or chromium or the other products that can be in paint, there are many things in paint, anti-foaming agents, any of that, that you do not want superheated. So nothing past a hairdryer, please, because that is very dangerous. It's of a concern to the manufacturers. So the best way to let your painting dry is to let it sit, expect it to sit overnight, at least to stop being smushy, and it's gonna take it a couple weeks to cure. So you're gonna wanna play, you wanna gonna be able to wanna rest it somewhere level for a couple of weeks. I hope you're gonna get paint pouring a try. It is a lot of fun. Um, there's lots of products at your local store for it. I've used GAC 100, I've used Pouring Medium, I've used GAC 800. It's all fun stuff and I highly recommend it. It's great for experimentation. I've got more pouring videos coming up that I'm sure you will enjoy. Be good to yourselves, make a beautiful mess, and I wanna see you at the easel really soon, or the pouring table, whichever comes first. All right, bye-bye.